you today's <laughs> subject. So today is a really handsome chimpanzee. I always like to give credit to the author. So the author is Becker, 1999, from Grove City, Ohio. And we're going to be using this image in our drawing that we're going to be doing. We're just gonna do a close up of a chimpanzee's face. So with that, let's jump right over to our drawing. So, okay, so as I jump into this drawing, as ever, it's always the same thing. Um, I, always, I always like try really hard to not see, like let's say the chimpanzee has these really cool eyes. I try not to see that. But instead, what I wanna see is I wanna see the big overall shapes. So I'm just gonna go, maybe I'll go with the, the mouth right here. Let's see how that looks. And thereabouts, make some room for the hand down here. When you start out drawing, don't forget, you wanna move your hand like this. All right, we're back. So as we're working on this and we're focusing on the really big picture, um, don't allow yourself to see like hair or ears or anything of that sort. Disallow yourself to do that and only allow yourself to see the biggest shapes. Like that ear, if you wanted to get specific this early on, you draw a perfect ear and then it wouldn't match the eyes and it wouldn't match anything else. But we're just gonna do a real cool close up here. Maybe afterwards we'll put in like some shoulders or something like that. We, we don't really even need to worry about it. But that more or less is the frame out for the face. Maybe one artist would summarize the top of the eyebrows right here. And we'll come down the side of the, basically this right here, I'll call this the eyebrows, I'll call this the cheekbones. Um, there are more technical names always for any of these things, but we're gonna keep it really, really simple for the time being and just say eyebrows, eyebrow ridge, cheekbones. All right, so then we have the nose right here. The nose comes down. So as we, uh, as we work, I enjoy seeing um, all different comments and I'll do, I always do my best to look at the comments and then respond and draw at the same time. It's kind of difficult because I'm also, at the same time that I'm drawing, I'm pumping my heart so that I have a heartbeat and I'm also breathing. Um, that together with, you know, drawing and my brain is just about ready to explode. So, oh boy, I forgot to blink. My eyes dried out. Um, all right, so imagine living in the house with me and having corny dad jokes, just like assaulting you all day long. It's torture. All right, so I have, for the nose right here, I kind of did like a V right there. And I think by looking at my drawing already that I, I'm already starting to get like somewhat of a likeness of a monkey. So the, the, the ideal as you're drawing and painting is you start out very abstract so it looks like the thing in abstract terms. It's not that you wanna keep it abstract for so long and it has no resemblance, but you wanna see the biggest possible picture. And I repeat myself constantly um, on this call. I'm very pleased to have a young student, a friend, Hanna, and Hanna would hear me repeat um, things over and over again. And one of them is, can you see the forest for the trees? Like, you know, I wouldn't necessarily phrase it that way. I would say like, look at the big picture. So in the studio, I would say that really, really often. So to look at the big picture, the trick that we would always do in the studio, and everyone can try this, and I'm, again, I've said these things before, close one eye and then open your other eye and really squint. Now look at me, how stupid do I look? All right, so when you close one eye and you squint, then you can actually see things really blurry. Ironically, that is a great way of starting a drawing. You don't wanna be focused on the details. So I'm gonna freak you guys out for a minute and check this out, ready? So I go really close and now look at my eye and it's like, and you're like, ah, step back from the camera because you're overwhelmed by the detail of everything. It's just, it's too much detail, it's too close. When we start a drawing, try as best as you can to think. Does, do any of you have like 
like glass in your house, like let's say on a shower door, maybe there's like a shower curtain or a window that's all foggy. So if you have like a door that's like that, that's like kind of like frosted or foggy, that's actually a great way of starting a drawing as if it's on the other side of a foggy piece of glass, not seeing the details. And then when you do get to the details, they're all gonna be, much more likely they're gonna be in a, a good spot. All right, so let's round out some eyes right here. I'm, as I'm working, closing that one eye and I'm squinting, really trying to get that just, just um, masked in. So now I have the upper head here. So I did choose a picture that is a little bit, like it's a little bit cut off there. Um, I did that on purpose because I just loved his personality. I was really taken by, <laughs> He almost seems like an old man hanging out, like, I don't know, at a coffee shop or at a barber shop or something like that. Like he has like, he looks like he has like a st stick of hay that he's like sticking into his mouth or something like that. Um, and I just love, love the personality in this guy's face. So, all right, so now that is more or less masked out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do something that I haven't done often with you guys, I'm gonna move into mass already. So by moving into mass, I'm gonna separate the light planes over here from the dark planes right here. Now you could do this by shading in, and that's a perfect way of working. Um, no problems right there if you're shading in like that. Or you can do this by jumping over, and you can take what I have right here, I have graphite powder. So you see that? And so that graphite powder is really great because I can then take it in my hand like this and I can just go boom and just mass in an area super, super fast. So I just go ahead and I make my way around. Now you see how the face on this guy is popping forward so quick. If you don't have graphite powder, um, really don't worry about it. Just take your pencil and you can shade it like that. And then once you take your pencil and you shade it like that, then you can smush it with your finger and you see it does the same thing as graphite powder. You could say, well, why not just use your pencil then? Um, I like to show you guys new techniques so that if you guys have birthdays coming up, you can ask your parents um, to, to buy some graphite powder and then you can experiment it with it at home. All right, so I like the way this is locking in. I feel pretty good about it. You see how that face is just popping right off at us? That's why I chose to mass in with the graphite powder. So when I'm done with the graphite powder, I usually try to conserve it, but it makes a big mess. And then I just like clean my hands off like that. My hands are gonna be a mess no matter what. So in a way, just kind of like, when you're drawing with me, drawing with Kevin, just give up, your hands are gonna get messy. Um, so I love reading in the messages right here. Someone, uh, Daniel wrote, cool, my grandmother went to Africa and was chased by an elephant. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, that would be really scary. Elephants are ridiculously powerful. Um, I have watched videos of an elephant just lightly moving its trunk and sending like a grown man flying across an entire room. So elephants are not to be messed with. <laughs> That's really wild. So um, then we move on to the nose right here. And all right, so I have that like kind of like masked in over here. And I'm going to maybe even start alluding to some of the details in the nose. So maybe I'll put in that little stripe right here. All right, cool. It feels pretty good right here. Now the light source is kind of coming from above. So the eyes are gonna get all blacked out, but then we're gonna find the information within the shadows. Trust me, it's gonna look cool. So something that's so interesting to me is I just love, as an artist, I love learning about nature. 
Um, so much of my life, if you look on a website called the African Community Conservation Foundation, um, I'm as, actually listed on there as, a, as an artist conservationist. Um, I don't really know what my official title is. I think I just made it up, but they gave me some title. And I do work where I create artwork and I draw animals, I draw people from Africa, I draw different an animals from different areas. Um, and then I sell it at auctions and I give all the money back to conservation. So I really, really love wildlife. I really love nature. And I also, at the same time, I love so much reading uh, the Bible and I really love reading in Genesis about just the creation. So um, you've been around me long enough to know that, to know that I, I believe that everything in our whole universe was created by a creator. And it's created by a creator, which is, what is interesting to me is that that creator had a personality. And that personality, different elements of it can be seen in so much of what he created. And so there's like a, what I'm gonna call like a half grin that this guy has. I know they don't have a human spirit, but the soul of whatever this breathing, breathing creature is, um, can be whimsical, and they seem like they can be goofy and they can play. And so I'm trying to capture that like really wonderful look in the eyes. I know that chimpanzees can actually be really, really savage and really brutal and really bloody. Um, so I'm not saying that these creatures are all gentle and hugs and kisses. Um, but still, what we're looking at right here is really, there's just something really endearing about it. Um, the other thing I love about the book of Genesis is that it talks about how in the beginning that the, I'm gonna fast forward through all the scriptures and just say that there was form. So by saying that there's form, what that really means is that there was like, let's say the structure, the planet of the, of earth, let's say that we're on the planets. Um, there, were the, there were the actual physical forms and then after that, we have, let's say, the sun and the moon and the stars. And what is so interesting to me is that first there's form, and then the form is illuminated, right? I'm not saying it's the very first thing. I'm actually saying, um, I'm going through and compressing all of the steps of creation to say that we first need to have the form and then we light it. And that's exactly, I was reading that the other day in Genesis. I was like, that's exactly how I draw. It's exactly how I paint. I come up with the idea of the form, and then within that form, I then hit it with light. And then I further develop the planes as they change and how they, really when you're drawing or you're painting, you, you can see as you draw and you paint, you can see the light hitting the planes at different angles. And so that's what I'm doing when I draw. I, I see form, and then I hit it with light, and then the light tells me what form is there, which is pretty interesting. It's like this back and forth process. So, all right, so we're getting some eyes in here. They're buried in that shadow. And this chimp has really, um, some really dark eyes. The white of his eyes aren't really present or seen. It's interesting, some chimpanzees actually have whites of eyes. And the chimpanzees that have whites of eyes, typically um, they do much better than the ones, and this is me with a popular knowledge. I'm not speaking to you as a primatologist and someone who understands chimpanzees inside and out. But um, I've heard that they are very successful in securing, like let's say, a wife, a husband um, in the primate colony, a mate, and then they're able to read much better because wherever their eyes turn, you can see the whites of their eyes. But this guy has all dark right here. But check it out, look up some chimpanzees that have whites of eyes and look at how much more they have like expression because you can see the eye like defined that way. It's really interesting. So,
All right, so now I'm really pushing this further and making the eye sockets a little bit darker. So now that I've made the eye sockets a little bit darker, I'm just gonna take my finger, I'm gonna blur the boundary right here between the eye socket and the outer area. So I've blurred that a little bit and now I'm gonna jump down here. Gonna curl up here. There's some cool little like wrinkles, indentations right here at the bridge of his nose. We'll go a little bit deeper, darker at the turn of his mouth right here. We can push. Now what I'm gonna do is, I have a 3B pencil at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to a darker pencil. Like if you don't have a darker pencil, just keep the pencil you have, and just push harder. But if you do have darker pencils, you can head towards the direction of like 5B, 7B, 9B. So the further on you go with the higher numbers in the Bs, the darker the pencil gets, right? So I'm gonna rifle through all of my pencils right here and I have right here a 7B. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna really just punch the dark of the hair right here. Just gonna push this really, really dark because I don't want this to overpower the composition, but I want the hair to send this forward. So you see what I'm doing is I, I put down the form, I put down the planes, and then I hit it with light. And so going back to get specific, um, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved upon the waters, and then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And that's so, so incredible to me. I never thought of it before, but that's exactly what I do when I start out with a drawing, where my drawing is without form and it's void, <laughs> and darkness is in a way there, blankness in the case of a white sheet of paper. All right, so now this is getting pretty busy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over and I'm going to use the blending stump and I'm just gonna unite everything with the blending stump over here. This works particularly well if you moved over to a soft pencil with me. So if you went over to like a 3B, 5B, 7B, 9B pencil, um, then it's gonna blend really nicely. Blending doesn't work quite the same way with a lighter pencil, but it still will work with a lighter pencil. It's just a different effect. All right, so this, I'm happy with the way this is starting to look. The blending stump really united it. If you don't have a blending stump, no worries. You can use your fingers. So you just take your fingers and go like this. Um, another thing that you can do is a blending stump is nothing more than a piece of paper just curled up like that. Um, so you can make your own blending stumps if you don't have them. Cool, so now I'm gonna jump over here. I'm gonna blend this a little bit more. I don't blend every drawing at all times, but for this drawing I feel like doing it. And I'm gonna carve out some sharp areas so we can go like really sharp in certain areas and smoky and soft, like let's say on the fur. I'm gonna push even darker in the eye socket. As you do this, you'll notice this gets a little bit washed out. We'll have to head back into there to strengthen that up again. If you at any point have questions and you're like, okay, how do I, how do I capture this? 
what you do is you close your eye and you squint and you look at your drawing and then you look at your reference. So ideally, I would be at a zoo right now or I'd be in Africa um, and I'd be looking at an actual chimpanzee. I always, if I can, I try to draw from actual life itself, but I will use photographic reference when I'm not able to get a chimpanzee in my studio. So you guys have to forgive me for not being able to rent a chimpanzee for the day. That would be a cool thing to do, right? And, all right. So there we have, now let's mass in something for the ears. I'm just gonna draw in, if you don't have the blending stump, just do this with your fingers if you feel like it. You can take um, your pencil and you can jump in this way and you can just sh shade in quickly for the ears. I try to show you a lot of different techniques so that nobody feels uh, left out here, depending on what you have. All right, great. So you see how everything is still really smoky and really soft and atmospheric? Um, that's a certain effect. Some people like that effect and they wanna keep that effect. Uh, for this drawing, I don't want to. And I'm gonna like blend into that to just kind of like knock that away a little bit. And now it's time for me to start to get specific. So to get specific, I'm going through my pencils here. I have all pencils down here and I'll show you different angles so you can see. I keep a bunch of pencils like, let's say here's a 2H pencil. Um, over here is where I have all of my pencils lined up. So if I want like, let's say, I don't know, like let's say I want a 4H pencil. I can just pull it out of the jar that's 4H and I'm all ready to go with like a different range right here. And so I'm gonna now start getting a, a little bit more specific in certain areas. So let's say I'll dig in right here at the nose. I'll start digging in right here. Maybe 2H was a little bit too light to go. I'm not sure. I'll play around with this for a little bit and then see where it takes me. Um, I love, I love the, the lips, <laughs> I love the smile. One of the things that amazes me is how close we are in terms of just like basic structural, like physical, like anatomy to not just a chimpanzee, but also like a grasshopper. Like a grasshopper has these powerful legs in the back but a grasshopper will have like a knee, like, like they'll have like something resembling an ankle. Um, so you can look at that, you can say like, oh wow, like there's like, you can see how power changes for an elephant. Elephant has this big, huge, powerful, like these leg bones are just so massive. And those bones enable it to hold up its massive torso, right? So in that sense, I find that so amazing that we're, we're created and we're here on this earth. We're formed, the Bible says, from the dust, right? Adam, Adam means from the dust or dusty. Eve actually means, Eve means, uh, I think, spirit filled or life, if I have that correct. Um, so you have that and that's really interesting. But then in another sense, we're created in God's image. And I find that to be so beautiful that, okay, we, we have legs and feet to walk across this earth, but in another sense, we're created in God's image. That doesn't mean we're on his level, but we have something about us that's like him in the human spirit. And when you are looking at the animal creation, sure, we're all eating food and we have molecules, right? <laughs> and blood is coursing through our veins. But in another sense, we're so set apart and it's just striking to me just how we can sit down as humans and listen to a Beethoven 
you know, piano sonata, or we can organize a trip to send Viking rovers to, to Mars and different things of that sort. I mean, the, the difference, the similarities, okay, they're pretty interesting to see how all of creation, how a dog is actually related in terms of the strength of its, of its back legs, but also the ability to move its front legs. It's re related just in terms of design to other things, but a dog has nothing to do whatsoever with the human spirit. And it doesn't wake up in the morning and say, oh, look at that beautiful sunrise. Um, not like a human spirit does. So I just find these things as I draw to be so interesting to like dwell on. All right, so, so now we're gonna put in the pupil. When you put in the pupil, the guy starts to gain personality. And so I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna put in the pupil over here. And the guy gains even more personality. So some, some of you guys are asking, when you go to Africa, uh, can we have a Zoom class when you bring a live animal into your studio? I will try to pull that off. <laughs> um, where I'm going, it's pretty far. It's, it's surrounded by jungle. And yet in the middle of it, they have an area where they actually built a computer lab uh, for their students. And so that's how, it's really exciting to say this, that's how um, Margaret, my wife and I have designed things so that we were able to connect with Watoto in Uganda and bring art classes to 75 or 65, I should say, students at Watoto. So cool. And so while I'm there, hopefully I'll have the internet connection to give you guys a Zoom class and to bring something in, that would be so fun. <laughs> I'll try to make that happen. I bet you it's gonna be a pretty shaky camera. I'll bring my cameras. I bet you the image won't be too stable, but I'll try my best. All right, so now I'm gonna deepen these values right here. And I really go for, I really close in and I try to get the eyes locked in early on in, any work of art. So not all artists will do that. Some artists will stay broad for a long time. Um, I go for the eyes soon, and that's just the way that I work. Um, the eyes matter to me a lot. And you know, the saying goes, the eyes are the windows into the soul. And that's why I was talking about that one chimpanzee that I've seen with whites of eyes. But he has such a such an interesting little personality. And you look at that. If you focus on that, you try to pull that out, a drawing like this can gain power. All right, so now let's put in, I think there's something fun about when you look at him, he has wrinkles and he's like kind of like looking up like that. Like I have been told by people that as a middle-aged man, I'm starting to get more wrinkles up here. That's the way it goes. Um, and so he's got these, these wrinkles right here. I doubt he's a middle-aged um, chimpanzee, but uh, we're gonna go for these wrinkles up in the corner. And they kind of come like this. They turn down right here, and they come up again. A wrinkle, if you're ever struggling with drawing wrinkles in a forehead, um, a wrinkle can be thought of as if our muscles are moving left to right over here. They're not necessarily, I'm just gonna say this quickly, but just try this mental exercise. Think of our flesh as moving left to right for a moment, and then there's a muscle that pulls it. And so it's like a, a bed sheet. And if you have a perfectly flat bed sheet and you pull, there's gonna be wrinkles that like go in that direction. So pretend you have like little strings that run vertically. Those are like the muscles and they pull and they cause the wrinkling. So you could say, that's very obvious, I already knew that. We have to say obvious things sometimes when we're studying drawing and painting, because to say them to ourselves helps us to actually think through it. So there is, again, there's a lot of personality in the turn of the, just like those wrinkles up there, they're just, I don't know, there's something really fun and charming about that. 
And I'm talking a lot about creation today, but I feel like it. I'm, I get very uh, excited every springtime. But I always think to myself that if there's personality in the universe, like if there's personality in this little guy right here, we have dogs that have personalities, then the creator had to have a personality. That's such a cool thing to think about, that we have personality because there's personality that created. And I just love that. And I, I think about that. I'm like, wow, like the source of all personality is a personality. And that just fills my heart with gladness because then that doesn't mean I'm just alone here. So there's such personality right here and I absolutely love it. If somebody said to me, okay, Kevin, you have to change your art career. For the rest of your life, all that you can do is draw chimpanzees. Um, I probably would be fine with that. <laughs> I think these things, these guys are so incredible. And all right, just kind of, I got a bit of a lighter pencil. This is an F pencil right here. And I'm going to start like indicating there are all these really cool wrinkles that come this way. Kind of like cut across the top like that. When I was a boy, I lived in Ireland and I lived deep in the hills of Ireland in a county called Wicklow. And it was a really amazing part of my, my life, my childhood. And we lived in the middle of all these like sheep farms and there were all these cows in the meadows and the bulls and we couldn't go near the bulls because if you were wearing a bright jacket and you went into a, an area that had bulls, the bull would actually see you and chase you down and run over you and trample you. So um, we had to steer clear of the bulls. And there were these dogs that would roam the area that took care of the sheep. And some of them were so nice. And some of those dogs were just born mean men. <laughs> like maybe they were brought up to be mean, I have no idea. But um, those dogs have personalities that I still remember because I still bear the scars of one of them. One of them ran over and as I was running away from the guy, he ran over and he bit me really hard. And I was like, ah! So the animal kingdom <laughs> has personality. And the other dog, his name was Prince. I loved so much. And when I had to leave Ireland and move to the United States, I was so sad that I had to leave Prince behind. And it was a really special sheep dog. And he, kind of, he became my dog over there. And I just loved him so much. And when we moved back to the United States, I was so sad that I had to leave Prince, my sheepdog. So my parents surprised me and they bought me a sheepdog similar and I named him Prince. And that was my dog all through the years growing up. Okay, so we're kind of getting to the end right here. I'll put a little bit more information in the nose so that we can just kind of like lock something in right over here. Maybe I'll go a little bit higher with that one wrinkle. Comes up a little bit more over here. Um, compared to the photograph, I made his nose too far away. Um, I don't think that's a big deal because when you look at the variation within the chimps, some of them have really long faces, some of them have really short faces. And so nobody will ever know the difference that like Kevin painted a long-faced chimpanzee. I think it will pass as believable. Maybe I'll strengthen up the lips a little bit. And I'm going to dig into the shadows down here just a little bit more because I love that, again, that like half smile the guy's got going on. Maybe it's kind of cool the way his, he's got this awesome beard right here. He's rocking this like, kind of like grizzly surfer look of like, yeah, man, I just like, not really into shaving, dude. And so like, this, all these stray hairs coming off. And now that this is dark over here, you can erase into it. So if you don't have a, an eraser like this, you can use like a common eraser to do this. So you could use something like this and you could pull into it with just a common eraser. I'm just using this one. So I'm gonna pull away into it. 
you see how that creates this like really cool feel to like him having this unshaven look. This guy has not shaved for years, you can tell. And then if you want to reinforce that, you can shade backwards into those erasures to like kind of darken in between here and there. And that'll make it pop off even more. Maybe I'll hit the nose with a little bit more value over here. And with that, we pretty much have our 45 minute or so drawing. And so I look forward to, this video is going to go to Watoto. I'm so excited for that. Can't wait to see everyone over at Watoto. I'm glad that all of you students over here in the United States, and actually some students possibly beyond as well today, um, that we're all like connecting this way, it's really fun.